Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be discussing loops. Loops are useful because loops perform a lot of the grunt work and really allow us to take advantage of the processing power of a computer. For instance, the image here is a snapshot of a two-dimensional nodal analysis involving heat transfer. What we are seeing here is the result of 10,000 repetitive calculations that were carried out using loop statements. This would have taken a person an absurd amount of time to accomplish by hand, but a computer was able to do this in about two seconds. A loop statement is a piece of code that repeats until certain conditions are met, and that's what allows us to do a lot of grunt work calculations using them. Okay, so what we're seeing here is just a standard do while loop statement, or just a loop statement. And if we look right here, we can see we have a normal procedure, we've declared a variable, we've um, assigned a value to this variable, and now here's where we're actually doing some arithmetic, we're doing some math. Um, if you notice, we have a condition up here, and the idea is that i, which is currently set to 1, will keep having 1 added to it while it's less than 11. So what that means, it's going to go 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it's going to keep looping, but the minute it hits 11, it's going to exit that loop, and then we're going to have a message box here that displays i. We're going to have an example of this later. Okay, so I just want to introduce you to the types of loops. And keep in mind that all loops pretty much perform the same way. They continue to repeat an expression or a set of code until certain conditions are met. For instance, the do while, this type of loop will keep running code while a particular condition is considered true or the condition is being met. Once that condition is no longer true, the loop ends. Then we go into a do until loop. Um, this type of loop will execute code until a particular condition has been met. So we'll keep running the code and once that condition is met then the loop will end. Now for the do while or the do until loops, if there's a situation where the conditions are always met, like for the do while, if the conditions are always met for the do while then that loop will continue infinitely. If we have a situation where under the do until loop if the conditions are never met then that loop will run continuously and I'll show you some examples of that later. Now what we move into is the for next or for each. Uh, really what that is is there's some boundary conditions. So we might have like a value between, like let's take a variable, i. i between 1 and 100. And what we're going to say is that this loop is going to run until i goes from 1 to 100. And that means somewhere in there we have to have i increasing in value. So that's how for uh, next loop works. So uh, what it's going to do is it's going to go uh, the first value of i or the first value of our variable and it's going to continue through that until we hit an end condition. So there's boundaries set by us, the user. This is the for each. It works just the same way as the for next loop, but it's specific to dealing with arrays. All right, so what I want to show you now is a step-by-step -step example of how loop statement actually operate. 